In this video, we're going to be trying to cut down the noise on this iPolo G1 Mini ASIC. This is the iPolo G1 Mini ASIC, and it's probably one of my favorite ASICs. However, it has one major flaw with it, and that is the fans that they decided to put in these do not have a long lifespan. So if we turn this on and let this spin up, it'll take a minute to boot. You'll hear how horrible it sounds. When I first got it, it wasn't very loud. Um, you could hear the fan spinning, but it wasn't horrible for an ASIC. And here you can, you can hear that. <laughs> the fan's kind of starting to grind. So the bearings are starting to go on several of the fans. So today we're going to try to replace these. Go ahead and unplug that. I did contact iPolo support and I told them, you know, the fans are starting to go. Can I buy replacements? He said, well, you, they're like, we really don't want to sell you replacements because it'll cost more to ship than the fans worth. The problem with these fans is they don't use a standard connector. So if we go ahead and pull the ASIC out, they don't use a standard four pin header. Uh, there actually is a three pin header on the board. This is not a fan, even though it looks like a fan port, it's not a fan. These four plugs are the fans. So these are four pin Molex. And so essentially what I have done since they really didn't want to sell the fans and this thing does not heat up much. I unplugged two of these fans. Like I unplugged the two rear ones and ran it for like a week and the temperature stayed the same as it was with all four fans running. It's very odd. But what I did is if we go ahead and let's pop one of these plugs off. And here you can see it's a standard four pin Molex. So what I did is I picked up, now you can get these on Amazon, and this is essentially a kit of the four pin Molex connectors. So they come with both the male and the female ends. Pop that off, here we can see the male end. And they also include the terminal ends to crimp on. We got the old fans out and just take a quick look at these and you can see that they are 12 volt 0.12 amps and so we went ahead and ordered some on amazon to replace these uh, not these exact ones i uh, was going to go with noctuous however they only came in 25 millimeter thick these are 20 millimeter thick and so if we put the 25s on, it wouldn't fit within the factory case. We would have to custom make our own case. So instead, I picked up these, and these are sold in two packs. And these, I believe, are 60 millimeter square by 15 millimeters thick. So a little bit thinner of a fan, and they're not PWM. However, the support team over at iPolo said that these would be should be fine and that um, essentially if you're not going to run PWM then just go ahead and get a 4200 uh, RPM fan. The factory ones are 5400 I believe. So this is a 4200 RPM and here we can see they're 12 volt but they're 0 0.1 amps. So we're looking at 0 0.02 amps less than the factory ones. Uh, but these should still remain hopefully relatively quiet. The factory ones, whenever I was running my unit, they were running at a constant uh, 4,000 to 4,200 RPM, even though they're PWM. So there's these should essentially be spinning at the same speed that these were spinning at all times anyways. Uh, the only difference here is we've got two wires instead of four wires. So we went ahead and we... On Amazon, we got our four pin connectors 
that are the same as the factory connectors. So instead of cutting these off, we're gonna go ahead and put some terminal ends on, put the two wires in. Uh, the If you're looking at the connector, if you're looking at the back side of the connector, the top left is gonna be your ground. The top right is gonna be your power. So we're gonna put black here, red here. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp the ends on, get them inserted in here. We're gonna see what the noise level is like. And then we'll make sure that everything's functional and go ahead and hopefully put the closure on. So I'm gonna start by just snipping off here. Now one thing you wanna do is you wanna to try to preserve as much wire as possible. And that is because the routing of the wires is a little bit tricky on the way the fans mount. So we're just gonna strip back a little bit on each of these. We're gonna grab our connectors. These can snap off, go ahead and insert it. And once these are in, we wanna just crimp down as good as we can. Then we're gonna pinch on the wire there. And then we're also gonna pinch here. Press that down a little bit. And then I like to snap off the edges with the side cutters. And that way it doesn't interfere with the pushing it into the connector. We go ahead and fold those over and just snap those off without hitting the wires. There you can see we've got a solid connection there. And just make sure you still have an opening here in the middle. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab our connector. We're gonna try to slot these in. I wanna go ahead and just push it in as far as we can. We actually want these to be a little bit further in. So you're just gonna take a pin or a tiny screwdriver, whatever you can, put it down inside and push those connectors. You don't want them popping through, but you want them um, a little bit further than, than what we have here. And the nice thing with the clear uh, connectors is you can actually see where the pin is. So we wanna slide it till it's almost um, to the edge. Now we got that connector in there and we're just gonna grab our ASIC and we're just gonna make sure it plugs in. which it does. And so we'll go ahead and unplug that and we're gonna do the other fans as well. We now have all the connectors on our fans and we're pretty much ready to put it back together and check out the cooling. But first thing I do wanna show you is the comparison between the two. Height wise, here you can see, we're basically a five millimeter difference, which is pretty much equivalent to just the flange. The bolts are gonna be a little bit long. However, if we take a look at the actual miner where all the threads are, there's no PCBs or circuits behind those. So those can stick out and be fine. If you wanted to, you could replace these with ones that are a little bit shorter, but essentially that's what you're looking at from a length standpoint by stepping down to these. You could put some spacers on there if you wanted to, um, but these are actually nice. They do fit recessed down in here and they don't come out. So that's actually a really nice um, bolt for the specific fans. <clears throat> so next step is to figure out the orientation that we want the fans to be in. And you want a push-pull mechanism on these. And so what we're gonna take a look here um, the Ethernet, I'll probably put in the back. So I'm going to put the fans, the push up front, pull out the back. And you want to make sure that you're orienting the wires so that they come up and down in here. And the same thing here uh, to plug in. So let's go ahead and start.
we've got all of our fans in. So moment of truth, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it sounds like. And that is much better. Back to probably what I would consider factory, uh, the stock factory sound. Uh, maybe a little bit quieter. So now let's go ahead and put it in the case. We verified all of our fans are spinning. We've got good airflow. All right, now we've got our grand enclosure. Let's go ahead and try to slot this in. Make sure we got good clearance. Which we do, perfect. Let's go ahead and put the cover on. Let's screw down the cover real quick. All right, beautiful. We got our Grin Miner back together. Let's go ahead and plug it back in. And let's listen to the sound. So certainly a little bit louder than our gold shell ASICs, but definitely tolerable. And we got rid of that grinding sound, which was driving me crazy. So now let's go ahead and plug in the ethernet cable, jump back over to the computer and double check the temperatures. We're back over in the iPolo dashboard. And what you can see, this thing's been up and running for quite a while. Uh, 345 to 630 so we're looking at about three hours of runtime in this chart and what you can see uh, if you look at the fan it's gonna look like there's a big difference but this scale is actually only 150 rpm difference so it has been the, all the fans have been staying uh, between 3900 and 4050 rpm they're 4200 RPM fans, so that is perfect. Again, there's no PWM on those fans. So this is what we would expect. And our temperatures are staying good as well. I actually have this miner in a closet. And so my temperatures are probably going to be a little bit higher than most. But we're sitting anywhere between 70 and 75 degrees Celsius. It fluctuates a little bit. Uh, but overall, that is excellent. Our hash rate, uh, you can see it started off at 1.23 grafts a second, and for the past hour or so, we've been stabilized at 1.28 grafts per second. So that is a increase over the factory a little bit. Uh, but here, if we look at temps, you can just see it's kind of it's kind of normalized there. And if we have it over to normal configuration, we can see our fans. Um, all spinning around that 4,000 RPM mark. So it looks like we're good. Again, PWM uh, is not enabled on these fans, right? They're two wire fans, so they're going to be running at full speed. So the sound clip I gave you a little bit ago is going to be what they sound like all the time. Uh, they're running in a closet. I can't really hear them. So this has been a success in my eyes.